Welcome back to Physics with Han. Today we're looking at an exam question. Here we've got a layer of oil floating on water in a glass container. We've got a light ray entering the oil at an angle of 44 degrees and it's refracting as it enters the water. We've, we've been given the refractive indexes of the oil, water and glass and we need to show that the angle of refraction in the figure is about 50 degrees. So this is a show that question. We're going to be using Snell's law to help us answer this. And Snell's law is on your data sheet. N1 sine theta 1 equals N2 sine theta 2. So we are trying to find theta 2, the angle of refraction. So we need to rearrange this equation, sine theta 2 equals n1 sine theta 1 over n2 and then we need to substitute substitute in our numbers so medium 1 is the oil and medium 2 is the water so refractive index of oil is 1.47 times sine 44 divided by the refractive index of the water which is 1.33 so if you put these numbers into your calculator, you should get out that sine theta 2 is equal to 0 0.768. And then to find theta 2 on its own, because we need to get rid of the sine, we do sine to the minus 1 of that answer. And we get out that theta, which is the angle of refraction, is 50.15 degrees. Do not round straight away because they've told you it's about 50. So you would never round straight away. Okay. The next part of this question is asking us to actually draw on the path of the light ray after it strikes the boundary between the water and the glass. The ray is going to look like this because the glass has a larger refractive index than the water. So the refractive index of water is 1.33 and glass is 1.47. So it's going to bend towards the normal at an angle of 44 degrees if you look at the symmetrical properties. And the fact that the refractive index of the oil and glass are equal. The next part of this question is explaining why total internal reflection is not going to occur when the ray travels from water to glass. Water has a refractive index of 1.33. Glass 1.47. Now, for total internal reflection to actually occur, you need the refractive index of material 1 to be greater than the refractive index of material 2. In this case, we are not meeting this condition because N1 is actually less than N2 here. So total internal reflection will not happen. The next part of this question is asking us to calculate the critical angle for the boundary between the glass and air. So in this case, total internal reflection can happen because the refractive index of air is less than glass. To find this critical angle, we need to use sine. Theta C is 1 over N. In this case, N is the refractive index of the glass. So sine theta C is going to be equal to 1 over 1.47. Again, to find theta C without the sine, you need to do sine to the minus 1 of 1 over 1.47. And you will get out an answer of 42.86. We're going to round that to 43 degrees because in the question, the, the smallest number of significant figures they work to is two. So we will also follow that. For the final part of this question, we are asked to complete the path of the ray after it strikes the boundary between the glass and air. So we need to determine whether we're actually going to get total internal reflection happening here. And to do that, we need to think about what our angle of incidence is between the um, glass entering the air. So we can figure out using um, opposite angles that that is going to be 44 degrees.
and 44 degrees is greater than the critical angle of 43 degrees. So that means total internal reflection will occur. So we know that the light ray is going to stay in the glass and it's just going to be reflected back up, heading back towards the water. So always draw normal lines on when you're sketching these diagrams. The light ray will reflect up with an angle of reflection, which should be equal to that angle of incidence. So it should be 44 degrees approximately. Then at the next boundary, we've drawn a normal again. Now, glass to water. Well, water has a lower refractive index than glass. So this ray is going to bend away from the normal slightly until it reaches the oil. And again, we've done another normal line. Now, oil has a greater refractive index than water. So the ray bends towards the normal and it actually continues straight when it hits the boundary um, between the oil and the glass. And that is because the oil and glass have exactly the same refractive index.